I was a Muslim. I was born in Iran, living in the city of Mashhad, living with a Muslim family helped me to grasp the very deep taste of Shiite Islam. Living with my family as fanatic Shiites, we learned how to practically use the daily requirements of the Salath and also the annual requirements of the fasting. And also I was, I had the privilege to go to the cities of Mecca and Medina. Well, before my age 16, so to become an Haji, that was the time that I felt more religious in my faith. Allah and Quran and practice of faith is a big portion of the Shiite life. And that is very important during, for instance, the month of Muharram, during the days of Ashura and Tasu'a, we, we mourn so dramatically about the Imam Hussein. And also, that is the time, for instance, during the uh, month of Ramadan on the 21st night, we hold Qurans on, the Quran on our head and we mourn because of Imam Ali's death and martyrdom. And we just, we practically, uh, we're forcing ourself, ourselves into a deeper level of mourning, feeling this is what is religion, uh, what religion is all about. I was a haji, right? after the Islamic revolution. So a double standard, a double emphasis on my faith. I felt more zealously that I, am, I have deeper and other responsibilities for my society, how to confront the infidels. Therefore, one day that for the first time in my life, I noticed of this building in the city of Mashhad around this third of a span, the square, a cross on the top of a building I went to that church and I started my journey against Christianity by confronting the pastor, the youth pastor of that church, whom gave me the first copies of gospel in my life. I got the first copy of gospel from that friend just because he told me to read it and come back with more questions as we have a Farsi parable saying, when the thief comes to your place, he can select and pick if he has a flashlight. So I felt that he gave me the flashlight, I could recognize the weaknesses of Christianity, of uh, that the, all the corrupted stories that they made about the prophet Esau, Jesus. I started reading the gospel and from the front to the back all the way in a matter of a few days, with many questions as I was reading that I was realizing oh yes of course Quran is correct by saying that this is a corrupted version of the Injil and I went to the church with tons of questions the pastor in that church answered some of those questions so patiently and with love and kind and care but one thing that was important was the pastor's approach to me. He said, we welcome you as long as you want to come here to be with us, to ask questions, you are more than welcome to come here. But I got to tell you something. I said, what? He said, are you Muslim? I said, yes, I am a Muslim. He said, oh, I'm glad that you are a Muslim because all of my Muslim friends are God-fearing people. I hope you are a God-fearing person. I said, of course. I fear Allah and I fear God, of course. And he said, because of that fear, I invite you to respect this place of worship, this church. I believe this is the house of God. And therefore, I expect you to respect God's presence at this place. So I said, of course I will. We went through this journey of asking questions and debating with the pastor in Mashhad. However, that did not change my life. What changed my life was to see the face of Jesus Christ and the hands, the loving, caring hands of Jesus Christ in three nuns, Catholic nuns, who were practicing their faith in that Protestant church in that city. They did two things that I felt Christ 
face and Christ's hands. One thing is that during our prayer time in the, in the sanctuary, they were humming one of the Christian classics hymnals. They were humming those so softly and so gently, so lovely, that it was touching my heart. I was feeling quite different, a different taste of religion, a different taste of faith. And another thing that these two, three sisters were doing was that they were caring. They were taking care of all of us Iranians. They were not Iranians, but they were taking care of Iranians. This is how I started thinking. There is a big difference between pra the practice of faith with mourning and beating ourselves by chains, etc. On the other side, practicing faith with cheerful hearts and big smiles and care for other people. For the first three months as I was attending, I can say very faithfully, every Sunday I attended that church. The reason was not that I was so thirsty for the endless debate between the pastor and myself, but to be honest with you, I was missing those three nuns so badly because they really cared. And also everybody else in the community, in that small church, everybody seemed to be caring and they, they were asking me, are you going to join, join us next Sunday? I was taking their invitation, to be honest with you, as an advertising of the faith. I was thinking that they were trying to attract me. However, later on I learned that they care. They loved me. They were showing that they do care about my faith, about my life, about my spirituality, and also physical, physical life. They did really care and showed it to me. One day, as I was pretending with everybody, as I put my head down with everybody, all of a sudden, I felt that I have to close my eyes. I couldn't hold it. It's a personal feeling that happened as soon as I closed my eyes. I felt that I am not on, the, on my seat anymore. I was about half a meter above the ground facing my face was I was feeling my face is towards the ground and I was fearful to open my eyes but all of a sudden my as my eyes were closed my mouth was opened I started to pray I prayed the entire prayer that I cannot recall the words all I can recall is something that I did not I don't do that after that time very often however I did that I said I pray all this in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit, Benami Pedar, Benami Pesar, Benami Ruhol Bodos, Amen. And as soon as I said that, I felt that I'm back to my seat. I could open my eyes. What I experienced is God so loved me that not only sent His Son for the forgiveness of our sins, but to lift me up from my mourning, from my sad life, to a happier, to an eternal joy, to a life of being, instead of subjective to some societal decisions, God transferred me to a different level of life, to being actively a participant in God's love, as in God's instrument to transfer God's love to the world. Right after that, I accepted the Lord. I started studying the gospel the Word of God says, the truth, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That is how I started elaborating. I started to hear the Word of God from God's, by hearing God's language, God's wording. God talked to me through the Bible in Bible's language. And the Bible's language is love, is agape, is care. It is not your way of getting to God. It is God's way to getting to you. In the Bible, I learned a quite different teaching, doctrine about God than what Quran is teaching us. In Quran, I learned that it is me who is struggling harshly and hardly to get to a higher level of righteousness, to get to Allah, if you will, which is impossible even according to Quran. But in the Angel, in the Gospel, I learned this is all wrong. It is not going to work. God came down and took us up. And that is guaranteed. I felt that. It is all about trust. It is a personal trust to God. It is not depends on my 
17 times of prayer. It is not about 30 days of fasting. It is not about mourning in Ashura and Tasu'a. It is not about protesting in the streets. It is not about revolution. It is not about all those things that I can do. It is not even about seven times of stones throwing around the city of Mecca to the symbol of Satan, or it is not even by the greatest Satan, etc. All those political and religious terminology. It is just by accepting God. That is all. And that is how God is changing you. That when you accept the Lord, the Lord will do something in your life that is not extraordinary. It is divine. It is a big change. And when you receive it, therefore, that's the result of God's work in one's life, in one's heart. I felt that God is calling me to act as a Christian person as a little Christ, Christ in Christ likeness by just obedience, being obedient to Christ. If Christ was here, what would Christ do today? That is my big topic in life every day. And when I think of that, I doubt it. If Christ, if Jesus Christ would perform prayers, namaz, or fasting, or hajj, or anything, Christ would release the bondages of struggles and pain and heal people and feed people and take them with him to heaven. God gave me something that I am going to share with you and tell you. If you are to the point that you feel nobody loves you anymore, if you feel that your hard attempts are getting you nowhere, if you feel that you're trying so hard and getting nowhere, if you feel that you are tired of this life, if you feel that you've been doing, going through days and nights over and over and over and over and the life is meaningless, this is where Jesus Christ becomes very, very reason and very answer to that situation. Jesus Christ became my reason, my answer. God is able to use you with all great things that you have in your life, with all gifts and talents that you have. You are a great person that God loves you so much. You are not only a God-fearing person, but you are a person that God died for you, therefore God loves you and cares for you. I pray that may one day the Holy Spirit reveals God's truth for you.